Welcome to Faith with Flavor, the place to be to season and encourage your faith. I'm your host, Donna Clayton. We were all born with our own set of gifts that are used to edify and build up the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says it best. Now to each one, the manifestation is given for the common good. One of those gifts is prophecy. And today you will meet prophetess Kathy Shelton, who will share how God set her apart for his good works at a young age. But first, I recently had the privilege of being on Praise Salsa Style, where I shared my testimony and how I got to where I am today. On this clip, I share how your obstacles can lead you to your dreams. Take a look. I'm sure you had to overcome some obstacles because yeah. no, no dream is fulfilled without some kind of obstacle. Tell us a little bit about the opposition you faced or what are some things you overcame in order to fulfill your dream? Well, I think we can all relate on a level where sometimes, you know, we have those dry spells and those dry seasons right. where you don't feel God. And I was entering one of those levels and, you know, I remember crying out to the Lord and, and thinking, you know, I saw my friends getting their big breaks. You know, they were getting jobs at NBC, something that I had long for, you know, because I studied broadcast journalism in school. But, you know, I had this moment where I just broke down and, and I said, Lord, like, did you forget about me, God? You know, and I know that there's many people out there that, that share right. that yeah. with me. That's but good. but you know what? God taught me something. He taught me that no matter what, we need to praise Him. And after I said that prayer and I had that breakdown, that moment with God, that raw moment, yeah. you know, one month later, I was offered the position of network coordinator for the Salsa wow. Network. So you wow. just gave it to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes I did. And literally cast yes. that care upon the Lord. Well, Donna, I want you to look into that camera. I want you to look into that camera and encourage someone who is expecting God to fulfill the dream they have. You have millions of young people watching right now who have that same expectation they've gone through, what you're talking about, they're going through this dry spell. Mm -hmm. How can they bridge that gap between what's their expectation, their faith in God, and what they're dealing with right now? What would you encourage them to do during the season of this dry spell? Amen. I believe that it is not by chance or coincidence that you're watching right now. God wanted you to tune in to be encouraged because there is no dream that is too big for God. We serve a God who is bigger than any dream you've ever had. Wow. And he is able to fulfill any dream that is in your heart. And I just wanna encourage you, don't give up on that dream. God has so much more in store for you. And this is only the beginning of what he has for you because you know what? You know, I know what it feels like to be in that dry spell and not know where to turn, not know what God was going to do in that moment. But I trusted God and I believed and I said, Lord, I'm going to continue to be faithful. Even when I don't feel you, even when I don't see you moving in my life, I'm going to continue to serve and trust that you yes. have a plan and a purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the word of God says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, oh, but in all of your ways, acknowledge Jesus. him and he will direct your path. And that is your scripture for today. Yeah. I believe there's a man watching right now and you feel like your hope has been deferred. But I'm here to tell you today that with God, there's always hope. Yes. There's no such thing as hopelessness in, uh, in the eyes of God. So take heart in that. God bless you. Wow. Amen. I love it. If you just started tuning into the show, that was a look at a little bit of my testimony, which aired on Praise Salsa Style. If you would like to know more, please find me at lifewithdonna.com. And now, without further ado, let's meet our special guest for today, Prophetess Kathy Shelton. Thank you so much for Hi, being precious. here. Hi, Precious. I'm so excited <laughs> about being here. That was powerful, what you said about um, no hopelessness in God. I believe that wow. so much because, you know, I feel like there's so many people that are living their lives without hope and yeah. that is so not our God. Our God is full of hope. Every day he gives us new promises to fulfill mm -hmm. and new dreams. Yes. And there's people out there that need those dreams to be born. And you know, of course there is a season and a time for everything, but I also believe Kathy that we have to be bold in the pursuit of what sets our souls on fire. You know, we have to be bold in the pursuit of the things that we know God has birthed inside of us, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes it starts like a little bitty seed. Like when you see a tree outside, it started with a little bitty seed. And you need to water that seed until the birth comes forth. Amen. Yeah. I agree. God is and good. 
Yes. You yes. know, we go through trials and he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear an evil. And sometimes you're going to go through valleys in your life Amen. where you die right there to your will, what you think. Mm -hmm. And so I call it DRT, where you die right there in the valley. But what God taught me is that he seasons you in the valleys of your life. Amen. You have salt and pepper and you got seasoning salt so people can taste and see that God is good in you. So there's a seasoning that takes place when you go through the valley as you hold on to God and meditate and stay in his word. Amen. Sometimes people say, well, trials make you strong. No, it's <laughs> the word of God that makes you strong. I agree. I, I agree. And you are very strong. You are strong oh. in the Lord and the power of his might. And when I met you, at the NRB. I that was fun, huh? It was so fun. It was yeah. so God, you mm -hmm. know, and now we're here and the show is happening. <laughs> but, you know, give us a little insider look on you. Like, what was life growing up for you? Were you always, you know, this strong in the Lord? No. I had to go through some valleys and get stripped and stripped and stripped and stripped. You know, I was married to... Um, I'm an NBA wife or ex-NBA wife, and I'm, I'm one that's almost gained the whole world and lost my mind, lost my soul. Mm. But I had to, you know, I'm a healthy girl now. But I was, <laughs> <laughs> I went down to 118 pounds just from going, being sick and throwing up a gallon of blood in, in a carton, just from going through bitterness and resentment, you know. Mm. And I went in the closet one time when I was married to my husband, and God said, you need to go on a fast. So I just put a pillow in there and I fasted for like three days. And I said, I'm not coming out until I find out what's going on. He said, it's you. You have bitterness in your heart towards your husband. And I don't care what he did. I want you to forgive him. Wow. So because he'll go on with his life and you'll be sick. So it was a process. Mm -hmm. He taught me I couldn't love on my own and I couldn't forgive on my own. But he said, I'll put my spirit within you and my spirit within you will cause you to walk in my character mm -hmm. to forgive. So sometimes it's a process. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'll do it all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But God is good. Yes, he is. Amen. And what is one of the biggest lessons that God has taught you so far? Be humble and know that God is with me because he said, nothing shall separate you from the love of God. No death, no life, no things to come, no things in the past, no things present. Oh, God, my tongues. But that nothing, no thing shall sever mm -hmm. your soul from God. Nothing shall separate you. So, you know, I used to be concerned about having a breakdown. He said, what, you what are you worried about that for? If you lost your mind, I know how to give it back to you because I'm the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. So for those that think that uh, you're going to lose your mind, don't worry about that. Because the Bible says when the king's heart is in the master's hand, Amen. your mind, your will, and emotions, when your heart is in God's hand, he'll change the way you feel. Amen. So, you know, I was raped uh, a couple years ago by uh, an attorney. And I hated him. I loved him and I hated him. At the same time, I said, God, I don't want to hate him. But he said, but you promised me if I would put my heart, your mind, your will, your soul, your emotions into God's hands, he said, I will change your emotions. Mm -hmm. I mean, I felt a shit. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, I could see him on television. It wouldn't affect me. So just because you go through brokenness or maybe you're going through a divorce in your life, it doesn't mean that you have to lose your mind. Because Isaiah, Isaiah 33, 6 says, I shall be the stability of your times and seasons. So everybody's in transition. I don't care. It says in Ecclesiastics, a time to live, a time to die, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war. Mm -hmm. But God said, I shall be the stability mm -hmm. of your times and seasons. And in that word stability is ability meaning that you can do all things through Christ, who is the strength. Strength also means soundness and sanity of your mind. So you can make it through the valleys. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Divorce, somebody had an abortion, Jesus. Mm. And God says he loves you very much. Mm. Mm. And there'll be another birth, but right now he wants to heal your mind. Wow, wow. praise God, that's powerful. I love how you just walk in your calling and your gift. Did you always know that you were going to be a prophetess growing up? No. <laughs> how, did, how, how was that born? I want to know. Uh, I just, I just, I just remember being taken away from here, like in the presence of God as a little bitty girl, like three years old. I was sick and in the hospital, but like about three. But um, when I was nine, 
the gifts just started flowing without me knowing, you know, just, I could just tell you things about people. So I didn't really, it just flowed. He said, I knew you before I placed you in your mother's womb and I called you then and set you apart then. Amen. So. And the gifts and the calling of God are yeah. without repentance. And I pray a lot, you know. And you do, you spend time in, in prayer, which is key, right? Yeah. And the word too. And the word. Yeah. You have to study the word. It's not just flowing in the gifts I study. You know, there's a lot of young people that watch this program, mm -hmm. and I want our young generation to be full of the gifts and the callings of God. I want them to, to be, you know, these people that cast vision and that are able to encourage and build up the body of Christ like that scripture in, mm -hmm. in Corinthians says. Well, he's really going to use you because you're a general. I know this <laughs> is supposed to be my interview, but... <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But I want you to encourage those young people watching. You know, maybe there's there's a girl watching and she feels mm -hmm. like she has that same prophetic gift, but she doesn't know how to bring it forth. Well, sometimes um, I see, um, yes, you've been tainted, but God's still going to use you. He's going to use your testimony. And you've been misunderstood because you're different, but the Bible says, well, peculiar. And so the bit, she said, I see the dreams and the visions are real, but I say, stay connected with the body of Christ. Um, you never see your arm walking down the street by itself because the Bible says the body jointly supply it. The eyes can't hear and the feet can't speak and the arms can't see. And so we have to work together as a body. But for, for the young prophets that are coming that I see that haven't been really been birthed yet, you need to be in a good Bible teaching, believing ministry full of the Holy Spirit. Um, be amongst your peers. And sometimes you get rejected, but God is not rejecting you. Do you hear me? So I pray in the name of Jesus. And I see you weeping <laughs> before God on your knees, just breaking down. This is not a breakdown. It's called a breakthrough. Jehovah Bel Perazim means the God of the breaking through. And you didn't just slip on. Uh huh. Some of you have been slamming. I see you. Smoking weed. I see you. But God is still going to use you. He's still going to use your life. Do you hear me? And yes, your mother doesn't understand you, honey, but God loves you and he sees you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's so powerful. I love it. I love Aww. it when you walk in your calling and destiny. It's so beautiful to see. I want to go back to that place where you were talking about where you had it all. You were an NBA wife and it didn't satisfy your soul. No. When did you come to that realization that money, you know, and things weren't going to well, buy you? Well, actually, my husband, I, God used to tell me, tell me, Kathy, I want you to give me your husband. He was an idol to me. I put him before God. Mm. And I used to have my hands like this. He said, give him to me. And I wouldn't. So he had to pry. Mm. Yeah, you put, you're not supposed to put man before God. I loved him. But you can't, he can't replace he told me he can't give you everything you need, Kathy, because he doesn't have it. Yes, God ordained male and female to be together, but there's a place in him, that a place where he can only satisfy you. That's right. And it says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, meaning his ways of doing things, all those things shall be added unto you, not taken away. Amen. So if you're not satisfied, God will satisfy you. Amen. Better than drugs and sex and... Food, because you can be addicted to food, too. Gluttony is real. Amen. I was going to a restaurant one time, and the Lord said, Kathy, I want you to be careful because eat more is in there. I said, who? <laughs> eat more. He said, a spirit of gluttony <gasps> is in the, in the all-you-can-eat place, and I want mm -hmm. you to be aware of who. And he told me gluttony was from idolatry because people were satisfying themselves with food. Mm. So you're not having sex anymore, but you eat up everything. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and so we're about just... to get him delivered right now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> amen, amen. Now we also have a clip that you brought to us, and yes. you, you know, just oh. being interviewed, right? Yeah, just teaching, because my heart really is for um, healing for women, for the, anything that'll move, but for women, and um, that's my heart. Amen. We're going to have a conference pretty soon with the NBA wives. Oh, very yeah. nice. I love yes. it. Well, take a look, you guys, at this clip that we have here featuring Kathy Shelton and her gifts. Watch this. The race that you're living is not given to the swift, my version. 
to the black, the white, the mm -hmm. rich, the poor, mm -hmm. but to those that endure to the end. Mm -hmm. And I always say that we are international. It's like we're in the Olympics mm -hmm. and you have hurdles in your life. Mm -hmm. It could be fear, poverty, but you got to lift your leg up over that mm -hmm. hurdle. Jesus, because mm -hmm. it will kiss you. Mm -hmm. So you're in a race. That's right. And if you knock one of those hurdles down and you stretch your Torah, stretch your Kotarasi, scratch your knees, get up and keep get up. running. So the race that we're living isn't given to the swift, mm -hmm. to the strong, the rich, the poor, but to those that endure to the end. Mm -hmm. And God will give you endurance. When you were praying early, earlier, I saw you adorning people with your mouth. And they were getting girded up. God mm, were come girded, on. girded up for come the on. journey. Yes. They were girding up their loins. It did. Yeah. Shot. Yes. Strengthening their heart. That's Hallelujah. why, you guys, uh, you need to listen to the word of God. Because he said, Amen. heaven and earth shall pass, pass away, away. But my word shall not pass away. And there's life and death in the power of your tongue. So when you hear the word, you need to grab hold That's to it. That's right. When the words that are speaking over the program. Grab hold. If you hold on to it and take it inside. Yeah. And walk Digest that thing, you will live. That's right. If you just started tuning into Faith with Flavor today, I'm sitting down with Prophetess Kathy Shelton, who is here with me today. Kathy, what a wonderful teaching that was. I love it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I study. Amen. I have to study, not, not just because of speaking before people, but I really, really love God. And that's, that's the only thing that really satisfies me is being in the presence of God and, and meditating on the word. That's, I mean, oh God, I'm hungry. It's okay for you to be a greedy sheep. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, I just, I really sense in my heart that that there's hearts that need to be mended back together again. Yes. And I know that you went through a divorce. Yes. Can you tell me what that process looked like for you? Broken. <laughs> it was hard. But God said I came to mend the heart, not to break your heart. Mm. So it was a process. But he began to tell me that, you know, I'm going to take you back because he said, right now you have a lot of idols and you have a lot of things and I don't mind you having things. I just don't want those things to have you. And he began to tell me, this is like 15 years ago, I'm going to take you back to the NBA to minister to the wives and the husbands. He said, but you won't have those, those things won't have you anymore. I know that there's so many women out there or, and men mm -hmm. that, you know, have dealt with divorce and they're mm -hmm. still trying to get healed or almost take that guilt out of the equation. Well, and then sometimes, quote unquote, quote, religious people will really take you through changes. God does not want you to be abused, or I've been in a battered women's home before. God does not want you to get beat up, mm -hmm. women or men. I see your little tummy. God doesn't want abuse. That's not the kind of God that we serve. He's not a hard taskmaster to beat you up. The Bible says, in loving kindness have I drawn thee, and he's not going to draw you to himself and beat you half to death. No. So I'm not telling you to get a divorce. You know, I separated, you know, because God said, if you don't, that you're going to go insane and be murdered. Mm -hmm. And so God wants you alive. And I used to tell my children, if you see things that are unseemly, go in the bathroom and pray. The children, I have some, they're not little now. They're six, seven, six, ten. I said, go in the bathroom and pray. So they used to go. They were filled with the Holy Ghost when they were two and five. I said, go in the bathroom and lay on your face and begin to pray. Amen. So I don't, anyway, but God wants you healed and there's life after divorce. And um, I'm not telling you to get a divorce, but I'm saying stay in fellowship with God. And God is a healer. And sometimes it's a process and he wants the best for you. God is not a thief that comes to steal, kill and destroy. So he's not trying to kill you. So right now I bind up the broken heart in the name of Jesus. I bind the broken heart. I bind it up in the name of Jesus. I see a suture. I bind up the broken heart in the name of Jesus. I bind up the shame and guilt because you yes. feel like it was your fault. Hmm. No, ma'am, you'll never be good enough for him. No, hmm. Jesus. And God wants to heal you. So don't be afraid of the process. And, and I hear nothing shall separate you from the love of God. He taught me no thing, no thing, no entity. I bind psychotic break, bipolar, tripolar. I was telling my girlfriend earlier um, about sometimes you, can, you need deliverance. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay for deliverance. If you can't go to the church and bleed on the carpet, where can you go? Amen. Oof. Amen. Oof. 
I've had some of my biggest breakthroughs just right there on the altar, yes. crying my eyes out in front of the Lord, in front of everybody else. But I didn't care because God was there yes. to meet me, right? <laughs> and for the homosexual, that's a secret homosexual in the closet. Well, the cover's going to be pulled off so you can be healed. God's going to un... There's a, he's going to uncover and then he's going to cover you with the blood of Jesus. So you can be healed from everything. I don't care what it is. Amen. Yeah, you started like this when you were little boys. You started liking boys. But God wants to heal you. He loves you. Do you hear me, sir? Yes, you're in the ministry. Yes, 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 I see. But God sees he wants to heal you. He's not trying to destroy you. I used to be, uh, I worked at a intern at KCRA in Channel 3 in Sacramento. See, where am I today? Oh. <laughs> and uh, I was at home. I, I was in the newsroom. Uh -huh. And the Holy Spirit in the morning, he said, Kathy, I want you to, uh, he told me there's going to be a lady that's going to call into the station. I want you to tell her to callete la boca. <laughs> tell her to be, <laughs> no, really. He said, be, tell her to be quiet because she wants to expose the pastor. There's something going on in the ministry. And so he woke me up in the morning. He said, you tell her to be quiet. God wants you to cover people. Jesus. He wants you to P-R-A-Y, not P-R-E-Y on weaknesses because we're all going through things in our lives. Amen. You hear me? And so, Pastor, sir, that, that has, that, that's a homosexual and you walk with a limp, God's going to heal you and he's going to restore Jesus. Amen. Just He's going to put a seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, meaning his ways of doing things and all those things you have need of like deliverance. Salvation means deliverance shall be added on to you. So, sir, I see you. Uh-huh. I see you. Your hair is black. Look wetta. God wants to heal you. And he sees. Oh, God, he's weeping. God yeah. sees your heart. And no, it wasn't your fault. The fondling when you were little, it wasn't your fault. But God is coming in for restoration. He's coming to get you. I went to a church in Los Angeles. Mm. And I used to work at a law firm. I'm not going to tell you names. I do have some wisdom. So this guy kept telling me, Every time he would come in, I worked at a law firm, mm -hmm. he'd say, oh, he's, talk he's talking about his lover. This is really important. And one day he brought a picture of my pastor in. I said, oh, my God. And the Holy Spirit said, Cállate la boca. Mm -hmm. Be quiet. He said, I'm going to go back and get him. I don't ever want you to say one word about this. Never told. No, you're not going to get an A. Never told. Never. He said, because I'm going to heal him to this day. Eventually, he did die. His wife ministers all around the world. But sometimes, men and women of God, you have to cover people. You uncover them when you start gossiping. He doesn't want you slandering and talking about your pastor. He wants you to cover them in love and prayer. Do you hear me? Mm. This is serious. He told me slandering was things that were true. Mm -hmm. but it wasn't edifying them. Mm. So we have to pray for yeah. people. So God wants to heal you. The ones that are going divorce, you're going through a divorce from your family. There's different types of this. There's a lot of divorces. Some divorces are meant to be. He's divorcing you from pain and sorrow and grief. That's the taninomore besheke. Let the divorce happen. The divorce I see is from sorrow and grief and pain and suffering. Yeah. You got seasoned in that season, but the season is changing. And now there's a shift in the spirit where he's taking you into a new season. So you're being divorced from sorrow and grief. Some, some processes you had to go through so he can season you. Do you hear me? But this season is changing for you. Jesus. Okay. Amen. Your turn. I want to bring out your your radio show really quick oh, okay so talk about your radio show and the vision that god has given you for that it's fun i love it um i've been doing radio for about 20 years um i was in albuquerque new mexico bakersfield and now on um kglh it's stevie wonders channel in los angeles and i talk about everything that pertains to life that's what he told me to just talk about everything from divorce to child abuse to politics and it's yeah. fun and what what kind of breakthroughs have you seen happen in people that oh have been on my gosh because sometimes i stay after sometimes i'll pray for people until two in the morning they call in and i had a guy i think you guys have had him on tv and his name is christopher ewan and um his book is called gay man's journey mm -hmm. so on that show 
I only got one minute. On that show, a lot of people begin to call and confess that they were sleeping with a, another woman or another man, and there's breakthroughs. And they said, Kathy, when you begin to pray, all that stuff broke off. Wow. Because you don't God. have to stay the same. Praise God. Amen. Absolutely. Really quick, you know, we only have a little bit of time, but I just want you to pray for our audience watching. Just look into the camera for me and however the Lord so leads. Cute. <laughs> okay. Um, Father God, I thank you. And I just plead the blood of Jesus yes, over Lord. all the, the listeners. Yes, and, Lord. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds. And I cancel um, every assignment. Yes, I, I bind mental illness, in the name of Jesus. God said where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty and his blessings yes, rest upon the head of the just. So I speak life over you today. And life begats life. God wants you to live. No more breakdowns. He's going to bring life in your family. Mama, there's somebody that's pregnant. Your baby is fine. Mm. Keep going. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Kathy, it's been such an honor oh, to have you on the show. If you. someone watching would like to be in touch with you, where can they go? Um, Kathy Shelton Alive at gmail.com. That's my email. And then I guess we'll have to post the other one. But Kathy Shelton Alive at gmail.com. I'd love to come and share if you have me. Amen. <laughs> amen. Thank you so much for being oh, here on the show. And thank, thank you, you at home for watching Faith with Flavor. I pray that this show has blessed you in a special way. And if it has, I would love to know your comments. Please find me at lifewithdonna.com and email me your thoughts. And lastly, I just want to give you this word of encouragement. You know, the word of God tells us in Isaiah 40, 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And I just pray that right now, wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, that you would just receive God's strength in your present circumstance. Just receive his strength. He has so much strength to give to you right now. And if you receive it, just say amen. Just raise your hand and just say amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching Faith of Flavor. Bye-bye.